Well, hi everyone. This is Sagar Shah and welcome to day 10 of Improve Your Chess with Sagar. Well, let me know in the comment section if all of you can hear me well. And uh, welcome to all the people who are already here. I see many of you being online uh, 30 minutes before the start of the show. You are excited and that's really amazing. So welcome to a few names I'll shout out. Uh, which I can see here, Sumed Ramteke, Shri Kumar Kesi. I just got to know he's nine years old. He's been mentioning this. Virinchi Vadali, Bhargav Abdul Karim, uh, Chanchal Ja, Ilam Parthi, Arun Polekar, Bhargav Saurav Banerjee, Juan Rajagopal, Shrutarth Maiti, Learn some. Okay, I hope uh, this connection will stay today. Uh, we already got disconnected, but it's quite possible that we may have choppy connection today because as I just mentioned, there'll be a lot of people online trying to listen to what uh, Narendra Modi is saying and that could be a reason why today's stream may experience problems. I hope that won't be the case, but let me know that you can hear me well now. Uh, at least it shows on my system that everything is fine. So let's begin with some tactics like we do always to warm up yourself. Today's class is going to be high intensity one. I want all of you to be in the best of mind frames because I've got a position for you which is extremely interesting. Okay. So uh, by the way, we have the first contribution today by Prathamesh Divekar who's contributed 100 rupees. Thank you so much, Prathamesh. Uh, for everyone here who's there, we are raising funds to fight against the coronavirus. And we have until now collected 30,611 rupees. Uh, and all the details can be found here. Like yesterday on our show, these are the people who contributed through the super chat. And these are the people who contributed through the pay you money link. I have it in the description below. So you can contribute there. I just want to shout out to these people because I don't get to know during the show. But later Manish Gupta, Vikrant Malwankar and Shri Kumar KC. Thank you for your contribution. Okay, so let's start and uh, let's begin with some tactics. Okay, so this is black to move. Pretty easy one to begin with. Let's see if you can get it right. Oh, it's still buffering. Okay. I think the speed should be okay. It should be okay. Yeah, Neev Patel, Sumed Ramteke, Honi Arora, Haider Yasmin, Pradyumna Kanu Kolu, Prakhar Bajaj. Everyone seems to have got the right answer. Although Jayesh Shah seems, says something different. Okay, that's interesting. He says, uh, I mean, majorly everyone here, including... Uh, Shuyan Shwarma, Pooja Duggar, Bhar, uh, Kimai Virle, Agastya De, Ripal Padmani. Everyone says Queen A3. But is also this move winning? I don't think so. Rook B2. I think Queen A3 is the stronger move. And now, did you consider this move? Did you see that you were a piece down or you just saw the, the move and you just typed it? Always consider the material. And try to find now what should black do. I guess uh, it's yeah, just take on B four. 
take on b4 seems okay so we take here with the queen or with the rook i guess rook b4 yeah and that's good okay let's go to the next one okay this is very easy but still i'm going to make you guys solve this white to move please do it a little bit seriously today because we have uh, really tough positions coming up and this is a, some kind of a warm up for that yeah all those who say queen uh, b4 or moves like queen g5 or something please work on your notation i hope that all of you here have taken this advice seriously and that you are working on your notations because that is going to be critical the right move as is rightly pointed out by um who's the first one that i received from i think it's jayesh shah yeah or new patel yeah it also depends on your internet connection because if you can answer quickly it means there's a smaller difference between what i am saying and you are getting queen g4 is the right move okay let's move on M many of you got it it's mate in one okay this is also mate in one let's move on yeah now maybe this is tricky white to move think okay think here today we have uh, my very good friend atul dahale who is live on the stream uh, and he, who is who's in the chat and uh, i i would uh, remind you that i had already told you a story i think it was in eighth session day before yesterday about playing against him and today he is here uh, thanks atul for being on the show yeah yeah you guys are pretty good i think the first one who gave the answer is the right answer is suyan sharma also ilam parthi got it right very good prakhar bajaj excellent uh, this is not an easy one it's a tricky one quest says 96 pankaj panchal got it right shesha reddy uh new patel you need to work on your notations so the right move here and also uh is knight to b6 i don't know how many of you got this but uh from from the chat i think this was a dicey one many of you found that if you make a queen then there is this check and after check this is a stalemate you see the queen is controlling these squares and this knight is controlling but many of you said make a rook but i think that with the rook you are already in a theoretically drawn position you know a rook versus knight against rook is a draw so you cannot really do this okay so that was a tough one Let's go to the next one I think the last one for the day This is black to move Well black is winning in several ways it seems like but Let's see what's the answer here. Arun Polekar says I can't type fast. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Can we download tactics says Shant Kumar Gudla. No, you just come to the account.chessbase.com and you play this. You can't download these. You have to solve them on the portal. Rook c2. Okay, what if rook c2 then king e2? 
I mean, it looks like the normal move and then you start pushing this pawn, but is there anything better? Or this should be good. Rook c2, king e3, h3, says Ilam Parthi. Okay. Yeah, didn't, didn't really finish off on a very big high. Let's do last one. I always say uh, one more. But yeah, this will be the last one for sure. So this is uh, bl black to move. Yeah, black to move. And be very careful because count the material first. What's happening here? Count the material so that you know what's going on. It says black to move and draw. Okay. Well, if you give me a check here, knight g3, I just come king g2, you take on f1, I take back, and you are already a piece down. Quest A says the right answer, rook h2. Arun Polekar as well, Pradyumna Kanukol, Kanukolu has got it right, Chanchal Ja, Sriyana Malya, Bhargav, well done guys, Kimaya Virle, good, I think you are, you are all warming up well, so you sack your rook and after it's taken, what do you do next, I want more than one move, yeah, write down the full, as Neev Patel rightly points out, you give a check, and then wherever the king goes, you follow him and you check, check, check and you draw the game. I hope it doesn't make me do this the entire class today. Okay, it's solved. Right, so what is it that we are going to do today? Any ideas? Any? Do you remember what is today's session? Does, does anyone remember? Saurav Banerjee says, Rishila was trying to contribute, but pay you money also seems to be very slow today. Missed the puzzles in doing so, but we shall try again. Well, please, please do it after the class uh, so that you can learn everything and do it later. And yes, to keep, if you can contribute via Super Chat, that's also an option. Yes, everyone is right. Today we are going to learn about past pawns. And past pawns are really beautiful pawns because they are past. Yeah, they are no pawns can stop them. For example, here in this exam, here on this board, if a position like this arises, then which pawn is the past pawn? Okay, I'm just uh, going to make it a little more tough for you guys. Yeah. Which is a which is the past pawn in this position? Okay, a little more. Sorry, uh, like this. Yeah. Yes, as you rightly pointed out. But now I have given you a new challenge. Which are the past pawns in this position? Tirupati, if you want to learn chess from beginner's level, you can check out a video on Chess Base India Hindi where they teach how to play chess. That's very, very interesting. Uh, so in this position, is there only one past pawn or two? Yes, as Honi Arora rightly points out, there are two past pawns. One is d5 and the other one is g6 as well. Although it's right now behind, let's say, other pawns, but no one can stop it. No pawn, because there are no white pawns here. While no one can stop this pawn. So these are past pawns. No pawn can stop it from queening. Like there is nothing in its path. It becomes a past pawn. If I put a pawn here, this becomes no longer a past pawn. Okay? Because it will be stopped by this pawn. So, very good. A big thanks to Shashank Aswat who writes, Hi Sagar, Shashank here. I'm originally from Bangalore but currently living in California. I binged watched the first nine episodes over last two days to catch up. 
great prom great work promoting chess keep it up well this is the first time someone has said they binged watched my show uh, i have always heard people say i binged watched game of thrones um say big bang theory some other episodes of some famous shows so it feels good and he's contributed a big amount of 20 dollars thank you so much shashank okay so let's now uh start with a position uh, just to give you an example so here uh the position that i'm going to give you is black to move what should black play and this is an interesting position yeah karan parik says the fide candidates will begin in two weeks in antarctica well that was a joke yeah the, uh, on chess.com uh, although i thought it was a little bit too obvious that one okay so black to move what do you play here first of all try to understand the imbalances and then try to come up with an answer in this position what would you play gargi says i gave almost all right but no shout out to my name well gargi i good job uh come on think guys don't just it's black to move here black to move ilam parthi has got it right very good job ilam parthi but let me see also rohit kumar has got it right atul dahale has got it right well done quest a has got it right preet matre well done kushal jani no uh, come on guys uh, i see a huge number of people just typing out the moves but you know always when you get a position you need to quickly do the imbalance method in your head what are the imbalances in the position for all of you who are not aware of what imbalances are here's the list of imbalances so this is the imbalance list now when you look at any position run through these points in your mind because if you do that you will be able to come up with a good plan okay so let's start the imbalances here first thing is the minor pieces what do you think how are the minor pieces in this position i have a feeling that the in terms of minor pieces black has a beautiful knight on d6 because as we know knight is is a very good blockader of passed pawns correct so this is a beautiful piece on d6 the bishop is nice it is open from both sides so again a nice piece while this is quite a passive bishop on g2 the knight on e2 i think has good scope it could go knight f4 knight d3 and push the queen away or you can also go knight c3 and later on try to exchange this knight on b5 so that's all about minor pieces then we come to pawn structures if you now look at it carefully first of all white has a passed pawn that cannot be stopped okay it's very important to see that secondly black has a queen side majority he has one pawn extra here so that's again something related to pawn structure i can say it's very difficult to determine who's better who has the better pawn structure but it seems like if black can block these pawns then this majority can give him a better pawn structure now moving on to the next imbalance is space okay who has more space i would say that because of these pawns here white has definitely some more space but black is not suffering because he has two minor pieces which are already off the board so in that sense black is relatively okay then we come next to the fourth imbalance which is material materially everything is even right now and we come to initiative okay by the way aditya ramnathan has 
written down uh, a few things uh, but let's say what black has the initiative according to him i i don't know but it's black to move so he can create some threats okay there are no threats by white in the position so black can create some threats so definitely he he would be able to have some initiative and then the last point is development not the last second last uh, i think both sides are pretty decently developed nothing over there and the last one is king safety i would say both kings are pretty safe i mean there is no problem with these kings now from all of this we realize that perhaps the most important thing here to focus on and this is where your real talent lies which imbalance to give more importance which imbalance to give less for example if you think that i should give importance to queen side majority then your move would have been something like a6 threatening maybe b5 after defending c5 that way but if your idea is something else then you might go for some other plan if you find some other Im imbalance important by the way a big shout out to rishila banerji who's contributed 200 rupees thank you so much by the way i would say rishila is uh, the same girl who 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 became very famous in um, in kolkata because she made a very nice portrait for vidit and gave it to him and also uh, there is a very famous video called uh, shortest draw by magnus carlsen i think you might have seen it on chess base india and in the audience uh, i am seen but behind me is rishila and her family saurav and uh, i think suparna their parents so thank you for your contribution also vipan kumar has contributed 100 and he said <clears throat> i am from himachal pradesh and already sent a game chess base india doing great job thank you i send you two games hope you see vipan i have got your game also you told me yesterday about the game of karpov so thank you so much for that uh, and vipan uh, is a player from himachal i have met him at some tournaments so thanks a lot for your contribution okay so after all these imbalances we come to this position where i feel that if black can maintain this blockade he would be better and so all those who said f5 i feel that it is not the best move okay the main reason being after let's say a move like ef5 or even if i don't play ef5 you are actually opening up this bad bishop which you don't want why do you want to open it this is not a weak pawn it will be defended secondly right now your pieces are well placed so let's go bishop a6 and you know white if he wants to go knight g1 uh, knight f3 he can't do it you can pick up this knight and be completely better for example let's say if white plays rook f2 bishop e2 rook e2 just Uh, i just want to show you a sample line now this position is completely better for black he has nice control on the central pawns so the next plan can be simply rook c8 with the idea of b5 c4 and start pushing your queen side majority it's very simple if you are able to get the imbalances right you will come up with a good plan okay good job yeah i would say even after bishop a6 the evaluation as aditya points out is equal plus but i would say it is minus plus definitely very good position for black okay so now i think you have got an idea about uh, past pawns let me just take you to one example which i think is very important for today it is the game pillsbury versus gunsberg uh, by the way a big thanks to virendra who's contributed 20 rupees virendra contributes each and every day to the stream so thank you so much okay so let me begin with a story it's story time like i always do uh, and i hope you enjoy these stories and they are not boring for you because many times uh, i i think that if a story is attached to learning it becomes very memorable okay 
so when i started off playing chess uh, one of my all my family members got to know like you know my aunt uncle cousin brothers cousin sisters and everyone said okay we have a sportsman in our family and you know i was just playing inter school or maybe uh, some rating tournaments and everyone wanted to help me you know get better at chess so what they would do is they would help me by getting some books yeah for me for chess and many of them lived in usa so when they would come to india the books were much more available there than in india and one of my aunts she brought uh, or she my cousin sister she brought a book called 62 most instructive games of chess okay uh, and 62 uh, game most instructive games of chess became one of my most favorite books it's written by irving shernoff if you are looking for in depth analysis you won't find in them but if you are looking for beautiful games you will and uh, i still remember it was this book and i would go into my room switch on a small light uh, like a table light have a chess board there and i went through those games again and again again and again and they are beautiful yeah the games in there and there is one game which which uh, i really liked and this was the game pillsbury versus gunsburg okay and it was played in hastings 1985 now the author of the book uh erving sherno wrote about this uh game and i will tell you it he said almost every tournament brings with it a share of exciting moments but none i venture to say contributed more than the hastings tournament in 1895 okay so it's almost 125 years ago to begin with it brought together the strongest field since the institution of international chess tournaments in 1851 so this was the strongest tournament at that point add to this the fact that the world's leading masters had not previously uh, had not met previously in tournament play and you will have an idea the interest it stirred up on this occasion okay so all the top players joined in you know in this tournament neither lasker champion of the world nor stenitz grandmaster and who was the previous world champion had met each other in tournament play nor had either of them encountered the mighty dr tarash winner of 40 uh, winner of four international tournaments in succession there were other powerful entries such as chigorin i think you know chigorin very well he has an opening named after him which goes b4 d5 c4 knight c6 who had recently drawn a bitterly fought match with tarash there was young schlechter whose reputation as a formid formidable antagonist had preceded him and the rising stars yanovski and mises who were known and feared for their vigor and attacking play there was the contingent from england headed by blackburn and teichman maybe teichman yeah both dangerous obstacles to the aspiring master should there be should these be cleared there were others schiffers bardeleben wolbrot gunsberg marco and burn okay so this tournament was very interesting you can say it was like the candidates at that time in 1895 you had lasker you had stenitz you had tarash you had chigorin all the top players in the world by no stretch of imagination could the chess playing public picture the unknown pillsbury as a possible winner of the highest honors so pillsbury became uh, you know started fighting for the top spot no one thought everyone thought lasker will win it everyone thought maybe tarash but pillsbury was at the top and imagine the keen interest that arose when this youngster proceeded to win game after game with astonishing ease and accuracy 
imagine if you can the excitement of the spectators when the final round began with Pillsbury leading the field the three players were in the running for the first prize Pillsbury with 15 and a half Chigorin with 15 and Tar and Lasker with 14 and a half Lasker as befitted a world champion made short work of his opponent displaying some and, uh, and 1 in 20 moves he beat Burn Chigorin had some trouble subduing Slector but eventually won a long game Pillsbury, meanwhile, thinking that a draw would be enough, was playing, played the opening of his game against Gunsberg tamely, allowing most of the pieces to be exchanged. Suddenly, aware of the danger being overtaken, Pillsbury began to play with great energy and brilliance with which he had previously mowed down Tarash, Tenets, Janowski, Pollock and Burn. His admirable handling of the endgame has been described by Renfield. Okay, so this endgame which we are going to study has been described by Renfield who says, Suddenly things began to happen at Pillsbury's board. The colorless... Okay, I'm going to read this maybe later. Otherwise, you'll get some hints. So, I hope that you don't... Uh, you were not bored from this entire thing but you got a feel of what it was like so this was the biggest tournament there last round Pillsbury White versus Gunsberg and the game began with the Slav and it was a Schlechter system now known when you play G6 BG7 it's known as the Schlechter Castles Knight E5 DC4 Bishop C4 Knight D5 F4 I'm not going to Spend too much time on the opening. So everything was exchanged and Pillsbury thought, okay, draw is okay. I will become the champion, you know, the great tournament. I'll win it. He played knight d3, knight d7, bd2, rook c8, king e2, e6, rook came, bishop f8. Rooks were exchanged. The rooks were exchanged again. Bishop d6, Bishop d2, King f8, B, Bishop b4. As we know, if you have a bad Bishop, try to exchange it. Bishop c5, a6, b4, f6. So we are coming close now. g4, black took, took. And we reach this position and white played knight b8. Okay, so now you need to put on your thinking caps okay this is going to be quite difficult for you yeah Pillsbury was white and so first of all I want the imbalances in this position also I mean it's a very end game like position so imbalances might not be very important here because you don't have to come up with plan but rather concrete calculation but still Let's do the imbalances here and try to find who is better. Okay. Shank says, I have read Irving Sherno's book. His analysis helped me so much. It made me love the Kohle attack and deep on opening. Plus, it also made me take chess principles very, very seriously. Wonderful. Okay. Right, don't tell me moves right now. Okay, first of all, let's try to understand the imbalances here and let's try to think what's happening because everyone can come up with moves. Okay, it's we we don't need to rush in here. Okay, let's see. Yogesh Mina says white has more space. Very good, Yogesh. Excellent. Alpesh Jadav, white has a past pawn. Good job, Alpesh. Ahmed Justin, white has a passed pawn plus space on the queen side. Good. Shrutarthi Maiti, C5 is a passer. Correct. Yusuf Farid says white is better because of the passed pawn here. Maybe. Okay. Black's knight is very bad, says Ishir Narayan. Okay. So more space, passed pawn. Ilamparthi also says the same. 
anything else anything else has anything else to say mayur gondalekar says white past pawn two pawns on h2 and a2 okay black knight going to blockade very good point mayur black knight is going to block the pawn this is important to know pawn on h7 uh you mean a6 b5 can be made with okay so basically uh mayur from mayur's comment i got that the knight is going to blockade okay that's one important thing because we know that knights are the best blockaders of passed pawns okay no one has told me yet one important thing virendra says my son is 6 years old and has played many tournaments previously i taught him regular openings but he used to fall in traps and gambits what is the okay we'll come to this how to not fall in traps pawn structure of black is good but white is also doing good both knights are active black king is more active namita's uh, statement okay interesting so no one is telling me that black has a queen side majority shobhit jaiswal has said it good job shobhit black has a queen side majority so if he plays knight c6 he can start to push his pawns right Sumed Ramtek says black wants to jump on c6 when his knight with his knight and he would be better now imagine you have got the imbalances a passed pawn more space for white black has a queen majority and the knight is all ready to jump into c6 to save uh to kind of block the passer and start pushing his queen side pawns and now put yourself in pillsbury shoes yeah you're sitting inside this playing hall it's 1895 125 years ago there are spectators all over only your game is going on all games are over if you win you become the champion if you draw then who was it who was the person who won the game actually uh yeah chigorin chigorin is right half point ahead of you right now if you draw then there'll be a tie break who knows who will win so first move can anyone tell me what is the best move for white okay i want to read a few more comments pankaj panchal says black has control over c6 nice blockade white has strong protected passed pawn space majority with play on king side black has queen side majority overall plus equal okay interesting Aditya Ramanathan says black has a better pawn structure because of his passed pawn white's knight is better than black's currently white has more space king safety equal initiative with white overall evaluation plus equal okay so interesting stuff here but now let's get to concrete so you've got the imbalances in your mind what should white play here and this is the tough part because now you have to calculate deep and i can tell you you guys have to calculate a lot a lot yeah a lot means you have to look at at least 10 moves ahead okay don't get don't freak out okay so i have a few moves stehen says f5 hema logu says g5 shoham shirode a4 arts and gadget stuff knight b4 shanks f5 kavita naidu says n b4 with 10 exclamation marks interesting why 10 uh, uh okay many moves but okay i'm going to look at knight b4 but knight b4 may not be the best move because i play a5 okay i push your knight away and if you move back then i come to c6 and uh, yeah i don't see how you got an any advantage of getting my pawn to a5 i don't see really any big advantage of it all those who say king d2 you are a little bit lazy i would say because you don't want to calculate there is a way to force stuff okay now think think here 
Vijay Chandar, please ask me the question after this game. So we will uh, we will get to it. But first this game. Kamlesh Das says G5. Well, Kamlesh, if you go G5, first of all, I can take it. After you take it, I can play Knight C6. And it is not very sure whether you are better here because if you go knight e5 i can take take and i think already black is the one who is in driver's seat because he brings his king here for example king d7 king d3 king c6 king d4 and now starts pushing his queen side majority and black uh, white is in trouble so g5 may not be the best move Bhargav says nc1 b3 na5 well true this could have been interesting but i'll just put my knight on c6 and you won't get in so it doesn't work saurav banerji says h4 yes it's a logical move you're gaining space but be concrete chess sometimes is tough because you need to calculate ahmed justin has come up with interesting line ahmed good job but don't say it cannot be stopped yeah i'm i want you to think deeper i want you to think more sarvanan uh, sarvanan san nandan says white has a pawn chain very correct this is a good strong pawn chain but what would be your first move nandan okay anyone here a4 is strong because ishir narayan says because after ba4 king d2 the Pawn promotes easier, though nb4 is also sensible. No, I think like if you play a4, first of all, let me understand how are you planning to actually um, say that this is a good move. You are giving up a pawn and then I am putting my knight here. It's going to take you one, two, three, four moves to win the pawn. And I think black can already start doing something with, uh, with e5 here in the center. It's, it's not so simple, not trivial at all. So don't just give up pawns like that. So basically, I would say that even chess 125 years ago was quite tough yeah, to understand. Okay, so I am not going to right now um, make moves on the board because I want all of you to calculate with me. First move played by Pillsbury and I think a few of you did suggest this move. Ilam Parthi was one of them. Also, I think I mentioned before Ashutosh, Agarwal uh, and some more. I'm sorry if I miss some names, but that is F5. Okay, I'm not making the move. So keep in your head. Anyone who joins in between may not understand. We are going to do blindfold calculation. F5. Okay, what is the idea? Now, if black takes this pawn, I take back. Sorry, I don't need to take back. If black takes this pawn uh, on, what is it, f5, he takes ef, then I can play knight f4, attacking the pawn on d5. Okay. Now, if he takes gf, then I can take gf. So f5, gf, gf. If you play e5, I can go knight f4 and this pawn cannot be defended. Are you getting me? If f5, if black plays g5, okay, this might be an interesting option. Uh, and uh, this is what happened in the game. So we'll come to it. Uh, if f5, knight c6, then already knight f4 is very strong. You see, you're attacking e6 and d5. Even in such a simple endgame, you can see the concrete things that are happening on the board. It's very difficult. Now, all the imbalances method that I taught you in the world is not going to make you a good player if you're not going to calculate, okay, if you can't calculate. So... I hope all of you are with me. F5 was played in the game. Black saw knight f4 is a big threat. So he decided to play g5. Now, let's move further. What do you ne do next? After f5, g5, what do you do next?
नेक्स्ट मूव हियर आर्ट्स एंड गैजेट स्टफ लेट्स फोकस ऑन एफ फाइव या एफ फाइव जयेश शाह से इफ एन बी फोर फर्स्ट मूव यस यू आर राइट ए फाइव सी सिक्स देन किंग डी सिक्स करेक्ट सो हा ओके यू मीन पंकज पंचाल से सी दिस एफ फाइव वीकनिंग द डी फाइव पॉन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ओके पंकज यू आर आई थिंक क्लोज ट्राई टू एनालाइज इट फर्दर इफ देर इज सम मिस्टेक ओके इलम पार्थी टाइनी बी बॉस रामनाथ नायक नो नॉट रामनाथ नायक एंड श्री देवी रंगाली नो नॉट एच फोर आई जस्ट टेक द पॉन या माई पॉन विल स्टार्ट क्वीनिंग डोंट गिव मी फ्री पॉन्स ओके सो द राइट मूव हियर वॉज आफ्टर एफ फाइव जी फाइव नाइट गोइंग टू बी फोर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग black is giving white no time sorry white is giving black no time if he gets knight c6 he would be happy so for example if you took fe6 in that position uh then i would take king e6 and put my knight on c6 later but after f5 g5 white went knight b4 and black said what are you doing you know you are coming here i'm going to kick you away with a5 so what did white do now okay all of you are with me i see that you all are thinking so please be with me yeah don't run away this is tough calculation i am teaching you something which by which you can understand how top players calculate okay so f5 g5 knight b4 a5 what does white play now ashutosh agarwal right haider yasmin very good ramnath nayak yes that's my question what if a5 what should you do no if you uh, well shyam krishnan thank you so much for contributing 1000 rupees to the stream it's a it's a great contribution from your end thank you very much uh, all those who are here remember we are raising money for the fight against corona virus so please uh, if anyone wants to contribute can do so very good tinku saha this time your exclamation marks are well deserved i think killer cat ilam parthi well done uh, chinmay jagga akash pranav rishila banerji well done guys jayesh shah as well sairam sampat abdul kalam samir unadkat yeah you are now getting closer so you don't save your knight here which is hanging but you play c6 so remember the position first move was f5 from here g5 knight b4 a5 c6 so white says if you take my knight i will play c7 and then i'm threatening to take this knight and also making a queen so you can't save both so black says don't worry what's the big deal i will play my king to d6 simple stuff yeah he stops the pawn what do you do next now king has come to d6 yes you are right all of you who said c6 were right mukilan bala prathamesh divekar ishir narayanan agastya de sarvanan arts gadgets and stuff neev patel everyone got c6 right but now king d6 what's the next move now after king d6 after king d6 what do you do yes you are right viraj chess agastya de ilam parthi siddharth vasisht prathamesh divekar saurav banerji well done guys sairam sampat you are now you see you are on move number 27 and you are now on move 30 so you calculated three moves accurately fe6 you you are giving up your knight but the point is if he takes a b4 you go e7 threatening to queen king takes e7 
c7 and suddenly the pawn has queen okay so basically this is really amazing chess yeah okay what is black's best defense now so you played a5 c6 king d6 fe6 what is black's best move can anyone tell me Black is not going to be your friend and say, I will take your knight, allow you e7. What will black play? Yes, Jeet, you are right. Jeet Shah is right. He is given a nice line, but not maybe. Be sure. Come on, calculate. Pankaj, I know you had the same thing. You calculated it much in advance, but I want everyone to calculate it accurately. So, good job by you. Aditya Ramanathan, Shesha Reddy, Ishan Pandey, very good. Kushal Jani, Vrat Chess, Arjun PR, Mayur Gondalekar, New Patel. Everyone has found the best defense for black which is knight into c6. Now you understand why grandmasters are called some kind of wizards, you know. They are walking on the street and they are thinking, ah, knight c6. And you say, but no, what knight into c6? The pawn is still on c5. Say, said, no, 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 I'm looking four moves ahead, you know. Okay, so knight into c6. Now, you will realize that your knight is hanging on b4. Your pawn is hanging on e6. What should you do? White to move. After black took knight into c6, what is your move? Well done, guys. All those who gave the right answers, I'm sure, sorry I can't call out uh, many names, but I will do some names. Niranjan Variyar, Sporty Nagaram. Uh, no, Sporty Nagaram, you said knight a6. No, that's not right because uh, I can just take yeah, knight into a6. My knight is on b4. Karan Parekh, Killer Cat, Suresh Borse, Kamlesh Das, Ramnath Nayak. Good job, guys. Okay, so now the question is, after knight into c6, what should white do? Well, some said knight into d5, but I take king d5 and you can't push e7 because the knight on c6 controls e7. So, e into, no, it's white to move, yeah, let's go from the start now, if everyone, let's not get confused, f5, g5, knight b4, a5, c6, king d6, fe6, knight into c6. And now white to move, what should white play? If you play e7, all those who said e7, I will take with the knight and you will lose the game. So don't say e7. So many e7s, I don't know why. Neev Patel has got it right, Vishal, uh, who else, who else, who else? Sumed Ramteke, you got it right, yes. No, but... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, not easy. Pooja Dugar says, please make moves. <laughs> well, this is the problem, yeah, in life and on the board. You can't make moves. You need to calculate. It will all get blurry in your head. You see the, the, the video when it starts lagging and buffering. Same way in your mind, it will start lagging and buffering, but don't give up. Think, think. So all those who said, knight into c6, good job. Good job by all of you. Okay, this is really good. Because after king into c6, remember you can't push e7, the king is still there. Yeah, so what is the move now? After knight c6, king into c6, white to move, what do you play? Yeah, well done. Well done, guys. Knight into c6 is the correct move. Aditya Ramnathan, yes, your answer is correct. Ishir Narayanan, also very interesting. Your answer is also right. But come on, move by move. Let's go move by move. After knight c6, knight into c6, king into c6. What should black play here? What should white play here? White's move. Well done, Shanks. Well done, Nirmay Garg. Well done, Dhar Singh, Ashutosh Agarwal. Great job. <clears throat> you can't play slowly then because he will go king d6 and pick up your e6 pawn. But you go e4. 
another pawn sack so if he goes king d6 you play e d5 okay and he can't take king d5 because e7 queens so after e4 uh after e4 was played white took d e but then came d5 check and king d6 and now how many of you can visualize this position correctly very difficult yeah very difficult this is not easy not easy where are the black pawns i don't know a5 a6 white pawn and all this so i'm going to show you a tool which can be useful for these things so this is the chess base account so let's go to the main window here and there is this thing called as fritz online okay i'm going to set this up here fritz online and what it offers you is it can help you to set up a position okay so i'm going to clear the board and i'm going to set up this very position that we are all solving right now black pawns okay white pawn on a2 black pawns ta, 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 ta. yeah black king on e7 knight on b8 and white king on e2 i hope this is the correct one it's white to move done now here there is a button called assisted calculation okay and when I click on here, it says enter moves blindly, check the notations to add variations, right click unveils the current position. Okay, so let's test first F5. Now the move comes up here on the notation but doesn't occur on the board. So he played G5. Now we went knight B4, he played A5, C6. King d6, f6, knight into c6, knight into c6, king into c6, e4, de, d5, king d6. And now this position, the entire moves have been made here, but what is the position didn't update on the board. But now if I right click here, uh, sorry, oops shouldn't do that yeah if i right click here i can see the position i've kept the right click on i leave it it goes back i right click it comes here this is very important for blind fold calculation okay so this is many of you are saying i can uh, calculate this entire thing well done then uh, if you can do it from f5 onwards but if you can't then try using this feature and then you can right click on any move here uh, place it it doesn't make moves on the board but you can then right click on the board and see ah this is the position okay let's go back and try to improve your blindfold training in this manner okay uh, by the way the variation has not ended as such with all these arrows here uh, King E3 as Ilamparthi, Anup Datta, Akash Pranav, Yogesh Meena, oh, everyone said you are right. So King E3 was played and then black went B4, King into E4, A4, King D4, H5, GH5, A3 and it was white went on to win so let's make the moves f5 g5 knight b4 a5 c6 now this pawn is about to queen yeah if you take the knight this is going to queen so therefore the right move was king d6 now f6 e now even if you still take i play e7 you take here i play c7 so therefore he cannot take he took here knight takes king takes and it may seem like black is winning now because he will come and win back the pawn but pillsbury went e4 powerful play takes d5 king d6 and last class we had seen that if there are passers on both sides of the board 
it's actually better than having on just one side but here you will see that this pawn beautifully controls these two pawns here and that's the reason why there are only passers here on this side of the board and white is just in time b4 takes a4 king d4 and you have no time to win this because after a3 king c king c3 and this is winning and now b4 king e4 a4 king d4 h5 was played black tried for something but now white spawn is just much faster and uh, gunsberg resigned here because white is making a queen i hope that i hope uh, i hope that <coughs> you enjoyed this game it was really a good game by pillsbury and he won the hastings tournament of 1895 and as i was i was as i promised you i'll read what renfield said he said suddenly things begin to happen at pillsbury's board the colorless king and pawn ending came to life pillsbury sacrificed a precious pawn or did he lose it he allowed gunsberg menacing past pawns on both sides of the board the excitement in the tournament room mounted unbearably at the realization of pillsbury's predicament uh, as the realization of pillsbury's predicament became clear to the spectators only one move was uh, sorry what was it only one man was calm perhaps he had seen it all he had calculated everything down to the most delicate detail with with the white hot inspiration of unique genius he had intuitively sensed the possibilities of a seemingly sterile position with inexorable accuracy he had worked out subtly timed win in a few moves the ending wound up as pillsbury had foreseen gunsberg resigned so beautifully did pillsbury conduct this end game to the reader it is a classic in the field of knight endings as well as king and pawn endings so i believe that this is extremely very useful and is very very relevant to our subject today related to past pawns because this is a past pawn it is going to be blocked on c6 but if you have a past pawn you must do everything in your power to get it pushed and that is how pillsbury played he played with energy he pushed it and this is what it means that past pawns lust to expand they want to expand always and you need to do it you need to make them take them to the queen queening square okay jaydeep chakrabarty has contributed today thank you so much jaydeep he says is there a workbook for reassess your chess also which engine fritz uses i believe it is not an engine by itself right well there is a reassess your chess workbook by silman it's uh, not available on chess base india shop but it does exist and it has very nice positions on the imbalances so try looking at that and the engine used by fritz is fritz engine but it is not that same engine on fritz 17 not that same power because uh, it's on the browser what we just saw so it might be weaker slightly but it is a very good engine it but it uses fritz 17 Mayur Gondalekar says thanks for the lovely blindfold calculation session and he's contributed 500 Japanese yen thank you mayur uh, a small uh, note to everyone here we have raised until now 30000 rupees uh, yesterday we raised 3700 i think today we have easily surpassed this a lot of you have contributed and if all of uh, all the money that is contributed here goes to the pm cares fund for the fight against corona virus uh, i have already mentioned before that here on fight covid 19.chessbase.in are the details of all the people who have contributed 
and those who cannot contribute via super chat can contribute through the pay you money link in the description it's the first link in the description you can use your debit or credit card to pay there okay so thank you all uh, for for contributing this was really nice of you ayush singh said it's a simple calculation well ayush i don't think it's a simple one i think uh, but remember that chess is about planning and then when you plan well you need to calculate and that's where many people fall short all those who say i lose winning positions i make certain errors it's because you are uh, not calculating well okay now let's uh, mukilan bala says how to check the expiry date of chess base account well mukilan the easy thing to do is go here go into uh, your home account.chessbase.com and there over here there is user data if you click on user data you will get all the details over there okay now krishna kumar bagel says why have you not announced my name i have contributed through pay you money tomorrow krishna kumar because i have to check through pay you money yesterday those who contributed i shouted out today so your name will be taken tomorrow okay so i'm going to check out a few games now by all of you uh, yesterday we saw a beautiful game by jayavira now today let's have a look at a game by anand sivaraman who is here and uh, anand sivaraman has sent his game and i'm going to put it up here he was playing against sayantan das who is a 2400 im and uh, he was playing white anand sivaraman this is his youtube name i don't know if anand sivaraman is online today but if you are then let us know and the point is here you have to assess this position and tell me who is better according to you so look at the imbalances and let me know who according to you is better in this position yeah sumed i think we'll be able to take your game today so so stay tuned yeah vijay chandar said sagar i had a question for you isn't chess a kind of addiction to my child as he always wants to play chess and doesn't like to do any other activity worried as a parent and where would he land next well actually it's it's a, it's a good addiction to have and if he if he is you know enjoying chess then might as well get him to work harder on chess there are always two forms of enjoyment in chess one is uh, that you just like to play but you don't like to work on chess like right now i'm asking you to think that he won't like but if you make him play somewhere he would enjoy it. so if he likes to just play inculcate in him the habit of analyzing to try to think to try to solve and if he does that it's really very nice it will help him in other spheres of life it will build his concentration i can tell you i really loved chess and uh, but when i used to study when i used for my examinations for ca exams chess proved very useful you can concentrate for long hours and that is invaluable you know he's building up skills which you may not even understand he's building up okay a big thanks to krishna kumar krishan kumar bagel for contributing 40 rupees this is a great uh, contribution sarvanan uh, has made a statement maybe it's his son or him i don't know he says a past pawn is more valuable than a queen yes you are right uh, a past pawn is a future potential queen and uh, you sh you must never underestimate anyone you know anyone can become anything in life okay so let's get to some answers here uh D pawn is IQ piece is Anup Datta. Yes, you are right. Danda Pani says take bishop into f5. That's what happened in the game. Uh, 
black has isolated pawn so this is definitely one thing in the position both sides are bishop so right now nothing much uh, mayur gondalekar says just because black knight is on the rim very good observation i'd say white is better of course black also has an isolated pawn so the being worse makes sense very good this is a good comment i like it position is equal after exchange says pradeep now remember one important thing if the opponent has an isolated pawn he must keep pieces on the board right we had we had discussed this so here uh you must take take and then play castles this was played by anand sivaraman which is a good move and you will see that if black cannot get in d4 he will be left with a weakness he has no queens on the board and the pieces are getting exchanged and so i think white is clearly better here yeah because he will play rook a d1 knight d4 or this knight d4 and he has a firm blockade on d4 by the way a big big thanks to ritesh dharmati who's contributed 30 dollars and says love your videos keep up the good work thank you so much ritesh um it's a, a great contribution from you and i'm glad that you enjoy the videos thanks a lot okay so i hope you all agree with me in this uh, assessment rook f8 was played anand played rook f1 and now after rook e4 bd2 was played perhaps something else was better maybe here g3 was possible also rook a d1 was fine but in the end bd2 bishop b6 and uh, i think black went wrong here i said sorry white went wrong here Yes Aditya I've read your comment and I think uh, this is a correct evaluation of the position what you have done well done uh here knight g3 was played but you see the thing is that now the control on d4 has reduced okay and also after rook d8 black suddenly started to threaten d4 at the right moment so in this way white's advantage sort of reduced so here it could have been better to actually play a move like say knight f4 attacking d5 and the point is after rook e1 rook e1 if he goes d4 i will play c4 and yes i give him a passed pawn but i'm going to play knight d3 and block it and then i am i will have a queen side majority with b4 and i will start pushing so i think i think this is a a very good example to show that how an isolated pawn can often be weak and even if you can make the isolated pawn a passed pawn here it can still be blockaded and you can make use of your majority so good job by all of you i think you you have been able to understand many of the things related to imbalances i have one more game here by sai shri vardhan uh, and sai shri vardhan's game has a very interesting opening which i want to just discuss with you so that you have an idea and uh, he said g4 was played by his opponent and you know i remember i had a friend his name i mean i am not in touch with him anymore his name was sanam somani a uh, very good player from mumbai and he told me sagar i have learnt a new opening i am going to play g4 and i said wow g4 looks really bad i think it's called the grobs attack or something like that so i said d5 you know what's the point i am going to attack your pawn so he said don't worry i'm going to play bishop g2 i said no look your pawn is hanging i said never mind take it so i took it and then he played c4 and i started thinking if i take d into c4 he will play bishop into b7 if i don't take 
what should I play? So I said, okay, can I do c6? So he went queen b3 and he put pressure here and here. And I became really nervous. I was like, have you prepared this? And he said, yes, this is an opening. And so this is known as the Grobs attack. And so this is an interesting opening, which I just wanted to share with you. If anyone is interested in this, can have a look at it. Black is by no means forced to take this pawn on g4. He can even play solidly with c6. But then usually white plays h3. I think there is a player called Bassman, if I am not mistaken, uh, who loves to play this with, uh, with white. Uh, there is this, I think, uh, IM. I don't know. Is he Bassman or... And Nakamura has played this, by the way. Yeah, I am just trying to see if I am right. Yes, Bassman. He, his name is Michael Bassman. He's a very colorful personality in the world of chess. And he does play this opening. Okay, so that was Sai Srivardhan's game. I think the opening of his game was very interesting. I just wanted to share with you. Uh, let's move to Prathamesh Divekar's game. Prathamesh is a regular at our sessions, always there. Prathamesh... Uh, played against Umesh Kulkarni, 1900 player. This was in Delhi. Prathamesh is black. And we do the same technique that we have been doing until now. The imbalances tell me black to move here. First of all, don't tell me a move. But tell me who is better here. Yeah, Shutartha Maiti says Magnus uses this to troll players. Okay, interesting. Her Suryavanshi, yes, I've got your game. I will be discussing it soon, maybe today or not. I don't know. Payal Panda says, I love you, Sagar. Okay, thank you so much, Payal. I don't know how old you are, but uh, thanks for this nice comment. Okay, is, is Prathamesh Divekar here? black to move what are the imbalances here who what's your evaluation what's happening aditya you have sent an annotated game i have received it yes good work ilam party says black is better okay ilam party but why Alan Thomas says, why are you drinking water in between? Uh, I think usually people drink water when they get thirsty. Yeah? So continuous talking does that. Okay. Uh, black seems better. Better pawn structure, says Yusuf Farid. Um, K Dexter says, I hope you show my game. Current 2105. Yes, I have received it. I have received it. Uh, Mayur Gondalekar says white Mayur is today really attentive he says white has an isolated pawn more active rooks on one open file okay uh, yeah semi open file white b pawn is backward for now yeah but very difficult to attack it so usually when a pawn is backward on a closed file it may not be very weak hence perhaps slight advantage for black okay Good assessment. Uh, Gargi, your comments do reach me. Don't worry. Yes, all of you who would like to send your games, do send it at chessbaseindia at gmail.com. White has two isolated pawns, uh, Sarvanan, but which one? I think only one, yeah, here on d4. Uh, Harish Kumar has contributed 40 rupees. Thank you so much, Harish, for your contribution. He's a trainer and he, he's often here contributing to the stream. Thank you so much, Harish, for this contribution. Uh, Sumit says, Black has two bishops. D4 pawn is a bit weak. White has more queen side space. Black has two open files. Black is better. Yes, I agree with this assessment. So what's your move now? All of you who have said this, 
Good job, Pankaj Panchal says black as bishop pair, white as isolated pawn, plays on both sides, black can put pressure on weak d pawn with open files for him. I agree and I think white is in trouble here. Uh, he is, as also Aditya has rightly pointed out that black has the bishop pair, white has IQP, black pawn structure is better, space is equal. Black has a semi-open file here, has an open file here, control of d5, which is usually the pawn in front of the isolated pawn is usually weak. So what Prathamesh did here was that he played bishop d4, black to move. And then after knight c3, he took, took and put his bishop here. How many of you agree with what Prathamesh did in this game? How many of you agree? Prathamesh took on c3 and put his bishop on c4. Do you agree with this may way of playing by black or do you say no, this was not right. You know, black could have done better. Anup Datta agrees with what Prathamesh has done. Okay, interesting. I do every... Shri Devi agrees. Virinchi agrees. Yusuf Farid doesn't agree. Chanchalja agrees. Payal Panda agrees. Art and Gadget Stuff agrees. Dandapani Kunus Kuppaswami agrees. Cyan Roy says bad strategy. So there is a yes and no. Debgar Debargya says no. Mitesh no. Chanchalja agrees. Quest says no. Sumed Ramteke says no. I don't agree. Very interesting. Yeah. This is usually everyone agrees and everyone doesn't agree. But here there is not. Uh, Ilam Party says I don't agree. Aditya Ramanathan do not agree. Tinku Saha says I agree. Vedant Kulkarni agree. Okay, 50-50. Now, someone said I agree 50%. No, you can't agree like that. I feel it's not the right strategy. The point is you have beautiful bishops. And you can just play natural moves. Rook a c8, rook fd8. Get your king into the game. You can just play calmly. Why do you want to give up your bishop pair? And so in the game, when you gave, when he gave up the bishop pair, yes, these pawns did become slightly weak, but also this pawn is weak. And that was immediately taken advantage of. And you can see how black actually put his bishop nicely. Now all the pawns are covered. If you put the bishop here, it's just equal. And Prathamesh went on to draw the game. It's good because uh, for him, he, his opponent was 400 ELO points higher rated than him. But I don't think ELO has anything to do with the position. If the position is better for you, you just play. You have the bishop pair. You grind your opponent. You play rook c8. If he plays rook c1, you play rook f d8. You just be there. Okay, for sorry. I think I, I got it wrong here because if you play this, I can take and if you can't take with the rook because bishop e4 is hanging. If bishop c1, rook c8 is coming. But maybe knight c3 is possible and then you just hang in there. Yeah, like you play bishop b3, you play bishop b7, any move. And I think black is going to have a nice time in this position. So that was, I think... Uh, not a good decision by by Prathamesh. I hope uh, Prathamesh you will be more careful when you have a long term advantage. Okay. I have also a position by um, who is it? Borse Pung, Gangesh Borse versus Jain Shreyansh and we reach an important position here and it is white to move and white made the move bishop e3 how many of you like this move bishop e3 in this position white to move ah maybe maybe did i make a mistake knight c3 d5 okay i should be more careful let me just uh, take that back if i'm very sorry um mm -mm. 
because I, I guess I just made it look too general in nature which is always a problem so I went rook a c8 knight c3 and I played bishop b7 when d5 is possible yeah shouldn't allow that because this bishop is hanging here so maybe what I should have done uh, could be that I play knight c3 and now rook f d8 the point being this exchange definitely is good for me because now the pawn here is weak okay now let's get back to the game of Gangesh he had played bishop e3 here and the question is is it good move or not so everyone says no 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 it's not a good move why is it not a good move because it's a passive move yeah you are putting your bishop on a passive square when you're playing the opening you must go for active moves so as someone pointed out bishop g5 is a possibility c4 is a possibility knight c3 also bishop d3 bishop c4 bishop b5 all these are good moves but bishop e3 somehow is just a little bit passive and as you will see in the game gangesh was uh, really outplayed by his opponent because he made certain passive moves uh, here black played really well and at the end you will see the king is weak checks came in and it was all over he lost a piece and the game okay let's go to the next game this is by suman chakrabarti who has played against dejan bochkov in a simul dejan is a gm and i think you played it on playchess.com there are simuls taking place uh, every week against gm if you are a premium member you get to play i think over there and um, uh, the thing which i want to discuss here is often when you play games you try to uh, by the way suman was black Boch bochkov or boykov was white and in the opening it's always recommended to make less pawn moves okay so in that sense i already think a6 of course it's an opening but if you're playing chess <clears throat> you should always remain careful about making such moves in the opening and now the next move was c6 do you like it or not the move c6 <clears throat> because when you make a lot of pawn moves in the opening you are falling behind in development so c6 by that logic should not be a good move yeah because here it would have been much better to either develop your knight or to play b5 with the idea of playing your bishop to b7 and then knight f6 c6 is just repeating the function that you already did with a6 and remember guys don't make too many pawn moves in the opening only make them if it is necessary if it helps in development of your pieces or controls the center okay all right let's go to one more game now this is uh, Itohan who sent a game Itohan uh, comes here every day he is from the US and uh, Itohan your game was very interesting I liked it I am just going to show it very quickly because your opponent did make a lot of mistakes in the game but you have annotated it very well and you have also put the imbalances and I liked it very much he blundered a piece here you should have taken it on e7 <clears throat> but then you anyway got it then you won a queen and you checkmated him good job uh, Itohan well done thanks for sending in your game well Sumed Ramteke is very uh, sad that his game was not being taken up well Sumed now we take your game and hopefully you can learn something out of this so the opening was Sumed was white his opponent was Ritwik Krishnan and he played the move e5 and you know I usually tell you guys 
don't study the openings too much but i should definitely mention to you that you must study it to an extent that you know the basic ideas so here if you are playing the open sicilian and when your opponent plays e5 what should black what should white do here in this position yes anup datta you are right nd b5 was the correct move here everyone says my game my game my game the point is your games are going to come but the in important thing is if you don't learn something from others games then you're missing out on opportunities to learn so focus here knight f3 was played by sumed which is not a good move because of what reason he played his knight back here can anyone tell me nd b5 is the correct move because you are threatening nd6 check so he must play d6 and then you can play either nd5 which is becoming the main line or you can play bishop g5 which is also a good move but knight f3 what is the problem here with nf3 what's wrong with this move can anyone tell me it's a passive move i agree but you know if you don't if you don't do something i'll play bishop c4 and i'll get a decent position well you want to try something different said sumed but the point is if if you play it this way then black has a very concrete way to equalize or you can even say take the initiative he goes as rightly pointed out by neev patel uh, kushal jani this move is correct which is bishop b4 well done the point is to take 94 now and so in the game bd2 was played but then after take take 94 uh this is just better i would say close to winning position for black maybe the better idea could have been to save the e4 pawn here but uh i guess d5 is already possible seems like a strong move by the way uh when i was making the move of the bishop you see there are different colors which are coming up and the c4 square is shown as a green color which means it could be an interesting move so worth looking into this move because if i take here i have a feeling that queen d5 is a is a powerful move attacking the knight and also on f7 or this could also be an interesting move to take take and check so look at it i don't know if it's good or bad but i just wanted to run it by you that maybe if you want to trap someone i don't know if someone has played it this played this before uh, what i usually do is i will click on reference because i have the chess base and mega database and i can have a look at here and you will see castles is the correct move some people have made have played knight into e4 when actually after queen d5 white seems to be doing well so maybe a trap to look into yeah nd6 perhaps but then you already can go knight into e5 or bishop b3 and somehow um, it's a little bit awkward yeah these knights here and the bishop block okay I guess that should be good for today. Uh there's last one game that also I would like to show you guys. This was sent by Sumed himself and he gave this position here uh with white to move and what is white's best move here? This is what he has asked. And uh have a look at the, all the imbalances here. You can see that um there are double pawns there are opposite color bishops this pawn is hanging 
so lot of things happening but what is the best move for white yeah rahul gupta is right you have given the right move p nayar anupdut datta the move you suggest was played by sumed but that was a mistake chanchal ja tinku saha your move was played by sumed uh, but it was a mistake he said he overlooked a move by his opponent so good analysis i think sumed does very good analysis uh, where do you live sumed can you tell us well if you take knight d5 then you just take and i don't see enough compensation for a piece so better is to actually play knight e4 very good move and after queen f4 to take here take here and then uh, maybe you can even take on b7 required but e4 is a powerful move because this pawn is pinned and after knight b6 a4 a5 and black is better in uh, sorry white is better in such positions but in the game he played e4 which seemed like a very natural move because it threatens e5 but what he missed was after queen f4 e5 came a very powerful stroke by black okay you live in nagpur that's interesting to know black to move and get a good position uh aditya ramanathan says why doesn't bd5 cd5 queen d5 and any four just crush black ah oh, okay interesting um yeah let's look at that first but here what was the best move yeah as shanks rightly points out knight into e5 and this is what created all the problems because h2 is a mate and if you move the rook away f2 is falling and black went on to win this was shreyas ghadi who was black he won against ram take sumed sumed ram the point is if Bish knight d5 okay i'm thinking if taking yeah okay i have i must take take but where, where is knight your ah you want to play knight d you want to play bishop d5 okay this is interesting bishop d5 because now if cd queen d5 king h8 or h7 knight e4 and white seems to be doing well because ah but can i can i do um, something else maybe king h8 so that knight e4 f6 doesn't come with a check and now if you go knight e4 uh knight b6 queen d6 yeah looks interesting for sure i mean it it could lead to some compensation for white for black but maybe i think bishop d5 can be met with king h8 the point being that if you now i'm threatening to take your bishop and if you try to save it then i'll go queen f4 and you are in trouble so maybe i shouldn't take that reshu jain i do read your comments and by the way guys i'm sorry if i have not read your comments or your game has not come up yet the point is we can only do so much but the main idea is that you must improve as chess players so please give that the first priority rather than saying whether i am seeing your games or i am not seeing your games this was a very interesting game uh, that we checked right now i have more games that we will be seeing tomorrow we will be looking at the next imbalance in chess which is space and we will be having a look at it uh, yeah so uh well 
all of you who sent me homework yesterday thanks a lot because i got some very interesting games that were sent like here if you see there was this game by uh, someone who sent me a game by uh, who was it let me just check karpov yusupov yeah this was by suman korchnoy karpov very interesting game so all these games were sent because you are doing your homework so thank you so much and please continue doing your homework every day uh, i would love all of you to focus on your notations improve them solve 100 tactics today from some source be it a book be it online be it somewhere solve 100 today and hopefully tomorrow will be a great day we going to either look at space or i'm going to show you something very interesting tomorrow let's see what we'll do uh, and uh, thank you all for for doing um, working on chess and uh, see you tomorrow and do subscribe to chess base india and all those who contributed today a big thank you if you would still like to do it after the show please do it from the link in the description this is sagar shah signing off see you